So we're going we're gonna to close with the really crowded area that uh, is the refractory patient. You know, we have first line EGF, VEGF, we have three VEGF inhibitors in second line, but we now have a couple of choices, soon to have a couple of choices. Yeah. And I want to first talk a little bit about uh, regorafenib, drug we've had around uh, a while now. We all have experience with it. Um, talk a little bit about how this drug fits into your treatment pathway, Dirk, and, and you know, what you've seen uh, with this medicine. Well, first of all, it perfectly fits into my treatment algorithms. I'm using it for almost every patient who is in good performance status. And we know only patients with a really good performance status or excellent performance status will have a benefit. And I found the data, the confirmatory data coming from the CONCUR trial, which mm. is also represented here in two abstracts. Tell people what that is again. This is really strengthening my use of this. CONCUR mm. is a, another randomized phase two trial of regorafenib versus placebo, um, like the correct trial, which was the phase three trial. But patients were less pre-treated. It was mm. an Asian trial, but only 60% of patients, no, 60% of patients had no molecular treatment in the uh, beginning, and mm. only the majority had two treatment lines before. So it was a earlier onset of this treatment with a larger benefit. And therefore, this for me confirmed the feeling I had for regorafenib. It is an active drug. It nicely works. It has to be managed adequately in terms of this specific adverse event profile, but then you get really nice results and surprising results. What's the, the right patient. dose? Well, this is a good uh, question because uh, the right dose, uh, not for all patients, is 160 milligrams three weeks on one week off. This is clear and uh, about 50% of patients are not able to tolerate this dose. Mm. Uh, you know, this is dosing not based on, uh, on square meter, or on, uh, on uh, weight of the mm. patient. And so it's like one dose fits everyone. And so it's obvious there cannot be the right dose for every patient. And so I think that is important uh, uh, to understand if, for example, 120 milligrams is uh, able to give the same kind of uh, efficacy mm. than the full dose. There are evidence that this is possible, this is the case. A lot of people uh, in real practice actually start with 120 and then eventually escalate to 160 uh, full dose or stay with 120. Yeah. And at least in our experience, you know, in Italy we had the strong experience in all clinical trials with uh, uh, regorafenib. Uh, most of patients treated for very long time, up to one year or more, were patients that were downgraded to 120 milligrams. You know, it, it just reminds me, we're old enough to remember capecitabine. Yeah. And the package dosing of capecitabine, yeah. we were fighting about the folic acid yeah, yeah. In, in our yeah. food, yeah. and yeah. that Myers was worse than yours, or yeah. Europeans yeah. were tougher yeah. than yeah. Uh, <laughs> North Americans. And, and yet, over time, no one uses that original yeah. dosing schedule anymore. And mm. we all are quite comfortable on what's a good dose yeah. and what's a, you know. So is this where we are with this drug? Is, is more studies, yeah. I, I more experience There is are at give least us a couple studies. One is currently running in U.S. Another one will start in Europe soon. They will try to explore a flexible uh, first month of treatment to understand which is the appropriate dose mm. for the patient. Mm. And if these trials will give the same signal that you are suggesting, then can tell us what is uh, the best option in real life or in practice. Yeah, I mean, your argument might be that is this a drug that should come to maintenance? My, my pushback on that has been uh, you know, it's too spicy. It's hard to give to patients. It's not really a good chronic therapy because of the toxicity. But, you know, they are doing a maintenance kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. 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 yeah, the idea was yeah. that maintenance yeah. Yeah. could be the place where you have the best fit patient. Because, you know, this is a patient responded to the first line, should be in good performance states, but if it should be PS0 or, or close to PS0, and uh, you are exploiting exploring the use of a multi-target agent. It can mm. block different angiogenic pathways, so different pathways can be an escape mechanism for uh, a tumor. In the way that Dirk was saying is a switch maintenance concept to be developed. Yeah. So I now have a little experience with TAS-102. Okay. I've got a few patients I've mm. treated through our extended use, compassionate okay. use uh, program. Um, I'm impressed on two fronts. One patients seem to have zero systemic side effects and patients absolute neutrophil counts when they come back are on the floor. So it's high, in this schedule, it's highly myelosuppressive, at yep. least so far in my experience, 
but very well tolerated systemically. Mm -hmm. Similar kinds of outcomes to what we saw in the clinic with uh, regorafenib in the clinical trial, so very similar PFS. Where do you think this medicine's going to fit as it almost certainly gets approved, already approved in Japan, gets approved for the rest of us for regular use? How you Chemo, right? It's not more targeted therapy. It's more of a 5-FU cousin, I would say. Right, right. Yeah. Where do you think it goes? Well, um, yeah, the, the question is really about the sequence of these drugs. For my interpretation, regorafenib is closer to, uh, I would say, a distinct treatment line, so meaning I would have this following if the patient is still in good performance status when he failed on the standard chemo plus anti-ETFR and anti-VEGF treatment, then I would rather have regorafenib in this setting because then there is a break of the hematotoxicity you mentioned. This specific toxicity can be better managed if the patient has a good performance status mm -hmm. in this setting. And then I would be happy to have TAS-102 at the later stage for, of yeah. the disease. But to be honest, Scientifically, we do not know which is the best sequence. And I when, guess yeah. never it will be very difficult to run you know, independent trials to explore yeah. which is the, you know, the right sequence. But I agree with Dirk, you know, at least common sense uh, is suggesting what Dirk was saying. Yeah, my, my initial reaction to this mm. medicine, it was going to quickly be the new CAPE cytobine. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. needs probably mm -hmm. a new dose and schedule yeah. um, as we work with it to minimize the myelosuppression. But, you know, this isn't, you know, we talk about switch maintenance, yeah. we talk about five FU through mm. lines of yeah. therapy. Yeah. Could you envision where you'd switch out your mm -hmm. yeah. quasi floral pyrimidine, right. you know, right. uh, between first and second? Is that where you see that going? Yeah, I agree. Uh, going forward? Yeah. And another major uh, aspect, at least in countries like mine, in which uh, the public health system will pay for, will be also matter of cost. Yeah. So, I